Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today we're back at it with multiple addresses. This is part two. That means if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch part one, then come on back. I'll wait for you. All right, so yesterday we took the address field that we had in the customer table and we added an address table, right? So now if we go to our customer form, you can see here's that customer's addresses. But how do you know which one's which? All right, you got physical, billing, shipping, home, office, PO box, whatever. So to store that information, we'll make another table to store our address type, and then we'll store an ID in the address table to store that type. All right, we wouldn't type that in here like billing or shipping or whatever. No, 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 no. So we're going to make another table. All right, table design, we'll call it address type ID, that's your auto number, okay? And then a description or whatever other information you wanna put in there. You could also put stuff in here like, you know, is this a mailing address? In other words, you know, uh, do you want their, their flyer to go to this address, that kind of thing. So if you do have a customer who's got three different addresses, where do you wanna send the, the flyer to? Or if it's a situation where it's seasonal, maybe you wanna send a copy of it here and a copy of it there, so that's up to you. Anything you want to put about this type of an address, you can put in here. All right, we'll save this as our address type table. Okay. And now what we'll need to do is take address type ID and stick that in the address T. All right, so go to address T, design view, come down here, paste it in. Oh, I didn't copy it. I thought I copied it. Address type ID. That's a number of type long integer. It's a foreign key, right? It points to an auto number in a different table. Now, just a style thing for myself, I like to keep all the IDs up at the top of the table. That's just, that's a Rec thing, that's a me thing, right? Primary key goes first, then any foreign keys go next, and then all the supplemental data goes after that. Okay, all right, save it, close it. Now, how do we, how do we use that field? Well, we're gonna add it in here as a combo box, right? So let's go to our address form, we'll design that puppy. Oh, I said puppy, my dog just looked at me. Uh, <laughs> All right, so we're going to slide all of this stuff over, like about as far as you think you're going to need it to be. Oh, this is a cheesy, uh, a cheap label. So we can put it back over here, and we can go in here. We can put type like that, all right? See, there are, there are some benefits to using one big label up here. I don't always do it, but sometimes I do it, like, like, like now. <laughs> all right, we'll grab our little combo box tool. This dude right there, we'll drop it in here. We're going to get the values from a table or query. This is that relational combo box video I told you to watch before part one, All right? Where are you getting your list of values from? The address type table, bring over both fields. We are going to sort it by description, okay? We don't have any data in there. Yeah, it's good. To, this is why I like to put data in there first. I forgot that step. And you can see why it's important to put some sample data in. Even if it's customers, you just put like Joe Smith in there. Because when you do things like this, now I can't see my columns, right? The key column is hidden. That's the ID, of course. We want that hidden. Description will go here, all right, like your billing, shipping, whatever, all right? Now, once the user picks that, we're going to store that field in the address type ID in the address table, okay, the field we just created. What label do you want? Doesn't matter. We're going to delete it anyways. One more thing I am going to do that I wish the wizard did is give this box a name because the wizard doesn't give things a name sometimes. Address type combo. I like to call them combos. You could call it ID if you want to. That just tells me later on it's a combo. All right, there's the label that comes with it. Delete that. We're gonna slide this guy up in here. It's just slightly unsized. That's another one of my little pet peeves. So you're gonna select everything, right click. You're gonna go size to grid. That'll make sure everybody snaps the exact same size. And since we just added this field, it's going to be last in the tab order. So we're going to fix our tab order, right? Click here, go to tab order, hit auto. That should fix everything in the correct order. And now we're all set. Bring that bottom back up, save it, close it, open it. And there you go. Now you can see we got to make this a little bit wider now too. That happens. You can make your address field smaller if you want to. Yes, I know there's a layout view. I really hate layout view, probably because when it first came out, I've had nothing but problems with it. You can come in here and switch to layout view, 
And then with layout view, you can make this is bigger. You know, it's easier to see the size of it in here. But honestly, I've had so many problems with layout view over the years. You have a little bit of extra space in there for the, the scroll bar if you have multiple items. I've had so many problems with layout view, I stopped using it. When you have a lot of VB code in your form, especially, I've had that mess up. Now, I don't know if it's gotten better. I'm assuming it probably has. But for me personally, I, I tend to stay away from layout view. That's just me. All right, and now we can come in here and we can pick, uh, oh, I don't have any data in here, do I? All right, close that down, open up the address type. And in here we got billing, we got shipping, we got uh, physical, we got office, we got PO box, whatever types of descriptions for addresses you want to have in there. That's completely up to you. Okay, now this is the case where if you want to have a list items edit form, you can. We're going to do this in a bit. We're going to create one for our addresses when we make it many to many. But if you want to throw a simple one together right for now so the user can change these, sometimes you want the users to be able to modify these, sometimes you don't. Some of these combo boxes you want to leave it so the admin or at least someone who knows what they're doing, a manager, is the one that makes the final decision on that. An address, no, that's a user thing. You want your users to easily be able to add new addresses. But address type, I don't know, that's up to you. Me personally, I'd stick away from it. I wouldn't put a list items edit form here. That's just me. Uh, unless like you're the only one that uses the database, you wanna make it easier for yourself, right? Just put a button somewhere. That opens up a form, it's linked to that. That's how I would do it, okay? All right, so there's uh, maybe their office address. Maybe this is their uh, PO box, whatever. All right, go to the next person. Whatever this address is, physical. Right, one somewhere, avenue, blah, 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 whatever. All right, now the next thing we're going to talk about is the many-to-many -many relationship. What if, let's say this 6900 Daniels Parkway, right? Let's say that you've got multiple customers who share that address. They're separate customer records, okay, but you want to be able to have them share a same address. And you want to know it's the same address, all right? Uh, for data entry, right, you go to type another one of these customers in, it just pulls up the same address. All right, you want to go to a different customer, maybe come over here and start typing in. Oh, 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 that's interesting. I've seen this one before. This is one of those weird errors, right? The link master fields property setting is produced as return without go sub. Return without go sub. I don't have any subroutines, whatever. If you get a weird error message like that and you can't explain it, all right, go into your VB editor. And if you've never used the VB editor before, that's okay. Uh, watch my intro to VBA video. I'll give you a link to it in a second. And just come in here. Okay, and go to debug compile. Okay, trust me, debug compile, shut it down, and then open it back up again. All right, now watch, come in here, type something in and look, that error went away. That's one of those weird errors that shows up. In fact, I'm gonna probably make a video about it, but I can't recreate it. So now that I've just recreated it, I might steal this video and make a separate video about it because it only shows up randomly. It only shows up here and there. The return without go sub error, especially when you haven't done any VB coding, right? Return without go sub is basically a, a, it's a VB programming thing, okay? But that's how you fix it. And sometimes just closing your database and restarting it fixes it, but a lot of times you have to compile the database and then it fix it, fixes it. So yeah, I know I said we wouldn't need any VBA, and we don't. This is just a weird error, and I'm, I'm kind of glad it came up. I've been wanting this error to pop up in a video for a while. Uh, but go watch this if you want to learn more about VBA, and go watch this video if you want to learn more about that debug compile. And it's, it's helpful if you get weird error messages like that sometimes. But anyways, back to the database. That's what we're going to cover in the next video. All right, if we go back to our slides, right, we got one customer who's got four addresses and we got another customer who's maybe related to this one and she shares an address, but she also has another address of her own. And that's why we need to make this a three table setup, a many to many setup. So if you haven't watched the many to many video yet, watch that before part three. And of course, tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel for part three. Members, you can watch it right now. I know I said after yesterday's you can watch it right now, but after yesterday's video, I, I kind of took a break and then didn't get back to it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a day late on that one. But I am going to record part three right now because I just had my coffee, so I'm good, as you can probably tell. So, <laughs> all right. So, for the rest of you, that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper. I'll see you tomorrow for part three.
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members 
get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.